We're back. We have Lucy who sees a market housing crash. Go ahead, Lucy. Why do, why do you say that? Because I have a house right now for sale. The house has been fully renovated, has a tremendous amount of land. Um, I mean, everything from the bathrooms to the kitchens, everything was done. We have solar, four-year warranties on everything, um, and I can't sell it. Hmm. Where do you live? I can't sell it. Where do you live? It's in Westchester, New York. Okay. Which is a suburbs. Yeah. Well, maybe people don't... And it's minutes from a a major trauma hospital. Hmm. So you 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 think your one instance might be indicative of what's coming? Well, I'm seeing it. I I I do a lot of research on uh, Trulia, um, all those websites with housing, and I noticed all the houses in Westchester are not selling. Mm. I mean, one guy lowered it almost a hundred thousand dollars, and he still hasn't sold it. So, We're getting people in, but nobody's buying. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if I think Westchester's indicative of the overall market in the country. I, I will tell you what was interesting, not not to not to prove what you're saying. I remember in 2006 or 07, we looked at a house in Manalapan, New Jersey, and it was like half a million dollars for like a dump. And I said, man, if I had to stretch this much to buy a house, it's a dump. It's a nice plot of land, nice area. Uh, off of Route 33 somewhere, I forget. We were looking, because at that time, my wife was a middle school teacher around there. And I was like, yeah, I'll just wait. Then I waited a couple more years, and we got a house that was double and nicer for, for even less. Double the size, double the beauty, Double the, you know, it was just a much greater house. So I, I do, sometimes there are these anecdotal things that then, oh, well, you know, that, that was, a, was a key moment. So maybe Westchester is the moment. I, I would say yeah, but Westchester. This house is totally renovated. Yeah, but, but I'd, I'd be curious, are people in uh, Darien, Connecticut finding what you're finding? Greenwich. That's kind of the, the league that I might put certain pockets of Westchester in. And some of those suburbs of wealthier enclaves traditionally, those people are moving to Florida. So, yeah, but even Florida's prices are dropping. Mm, not really. I mean, I'm, I'm, I, I've, I've not seen that. I'm dro- it depends where you're looking. I'm not seeing Florida dropping at all. Well, for, well, for example, I was looking at, at houses in, in Sarasota. Sarasota, maybe. About but I'm talking six like, months ago, yeah. you couldn't get one for like more than less than six hundred thousand. Yeah. Now you can get one for three hundred thousand. The same house. Yeah, I'm just not seeing that. I, I I'm not I'm not seeing that at all. I mean I, I, I mean I'm not I'm no real estate expert, but but I'm looking at houses in Boca, Raton, not even in Boca, like twenty minutes away, but they're calling themselves Boca. Like nine hundred thousand a million. Palm Beach houses are like ten million dollars on average. Um, and you might say, well, those are two you know wealthier areas, but I'm I'm just not seeing movement down there. I'm not seeing um, Sarasota. I, I don't really know Sarasota, but I know Siesta Key, and Siesta Key's showing no signs of letting up. So maybe it depends on where you're looking. You know, I just I'm just not seeing the market. I mean. According to this article, the article is saying that there are signs of slowing. So you might be right. And I, and I think you probably are right. But uh, I, I'm not seeing it in certain areas. I'm not seeing it. Jersey Shore is hot right now. Things are going left and right. Um, so maybe it's where I live, you know. The, the house that I have is so versatile yeah. because you can make it a mother-daughter in, like, minutes. Yeah. Well, if you wanted to. Well, who, who, who wants to live with their mother? Their mother-in-law. Well, when I say a mother-daughter, you could have, you know, your kids up there. When they say mother-daughter, they mean same I know, family. I am having fun with you. So. Um, no, no, but, 
I appreciate what you're saying. It is confirming the one article that I'm reading that the housing market is starting to slow. So, you, you know, you're in good company. There, there's a, there's a piece. Who's that piece by Business Insider? Five reasons the market, housing market, is starting to crack. And apparently, what you're saying is indicative. I, I personally though don't think. Westchester or pockets of Connecticut or wealthy New York suburbs are really indicative of what is, is through the whole country because you're going to see a lot of wealthier people are just leaving those areas because they're retiring and they're they're going down to Florida or you know maybe they're not that's going what to we're doing. Yeah. Well, that's what we're trying to do. Exactly. So that's my point. So I wonder how much of that is just everybody wants to move and downsize, like boomers who had a nice home in Westchester. They're trying to look for a cheaper area to live. And maybe there's... Well, I'm not looking for a cheaper li way to live. I just want out of New York. Yeah. Cause... Because the the way New York is run, I don't even want to be here no more. Yeah. Well, that's a lot of people. A lot of people are uh, political risk. They're they're leaving to lower tax states, definitely. So thank you so much for the call, Lucy. And Lucy, if you need help planning a retirement as you're downsizing, give us a call. 888-988-JOSH. I'd love to meet with you. Okay, Lucy? Thank you. Thank you. Great, great points. Uh, next up, Bob also sees problems in the housing market. Or other, or maybe... Um, I mean, the article was suggesting this. I just, I don't see it everywhere. I, I certainly don't see it in Florida. Florida's hot. Yourobserver.com says uh, Sarasota in particular in May of 2021 is 36% higher than May 2020. Yeah, but she was saying maybe the last so many months in Sarasota's down, or the last six months. Florida, though, is seasonally worse, though, in the summer when it's really hot. So I don't. I don't know if that's an indi indication. Next up, Bob, he sees problems in the housing market. Go ahead, Bob. Yeah, I, I'm saying that uh, part of the housing market is rental property, you know, rental income property. And you've got a moratorium on collecting rents. Who in his right mind would buy a rental house today if he has really no assurance of getting his rent and almost an assurance of not getting his rent? So I think that might put a dent in the market. Yeah, I mean, I, I have said for years to our wealthy real estate listeners, you can't rely solely on real estate. You have to have other things as a part of your retirement plan so that you still have money coming in. You need equities, you need cash, you need fixed income, and you need real estate. You know, you can't just be all in real estate because like what you're saying, a lot of people relying on that rental income, they, they're not getting it. And they're going to sell for you know 50% off. But yeah, no, that's yeah. a good point. Why would you buy rental property if the government now, I mean, do we really live in America? The government can, can now say you can't collect rent. There are no yeah. private property rights anymore. It's crazy. Yeah, it's They've confiscated your property, in effect, really. Well, even yeah. worse, right? Think about this. This is even worse because you can't get rent. Your values are going to plummet. Yeah. And some rich person's going to gobble up your properties at half. So that's going to yeah. be another wealth distribution driving away middle class wealth. And, and that's why a lot of these tax proposals, you know, oh, we're going to tax people who make over 400 grand a year, make over, you know what? That's your doctor, your dentist, your lawyer, your, your community people who save, who build something. Those are people from lower middle class households. Those are people from nothing who made something of themselves. They're not taxing Zuckerberg. They're not taxing Warren Buffett. Warren Buffett doesn't even make, well, he, he, I, I looked at the, the roster of what Warren Buffett gets his salary from Berkshire Hathaway he gets like a hundred grand a year. Yeah, you know? well, <laughs> but 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 he uh, owns you know billions that. and billions of Berkshire Hathaway stock, which by the way he doesn't pay tax on because it doesn't pay a dividend. So yeah, all well, of 
all of these issues with stocks could be solved, not by raising the rate, but by mandating that companies have to pay a dividend to their shareholders. That's the other thing. We've gone to a stock market that does not reward stock owners with dividends. And we've allowed that in the era of voting shares yeah. and non-voting shares. So uh, there's really some crazy developments in, in the world that that's why we're here to, to navigate you through your crazy retirement. Eight at eight, nine at eight, Josh. Any other questions on that, Bob? Just one, one thing about the diapers. <laughs> Buy a bunch of cotton diapers and wash them. You never have to buy diapers again, okay? <laughs> yeah, I value my labor. Um, uh, okay. <laughs> All right. It's just you don't have to buy hundreds and hundreds of diapers. You buy a dozen cotton diapers, you're done. That's all I've got to say. Anyway, it was a pleasure. Thank you very much. Are, are you? Did, did you ever do that? Are you washing cotton diapers? Uh, we did for a while. That was many years ago. I mean, my youngest child is 38 years old now. No, so, I think, so I think you're a, right. It was a Meaning different time. If, you know? if you're struggling time. financially, I think you're, you're dead on right, though. If you're struggling financially, that's a way uh -huh. to save, you know, 40, 50 bucks a week. Yeah. Bring back cloth that, diapers, you know, and you soak them in a bucket and you, you have the, 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 uh, yeah. the excrement could uh, yeah. fertilize your, your flowers. But I'm not doing it. Sorry. Uh, no problem. Personal choice. But hey, no, thank you. Uh, Next up, I, I we have to go to Paul, who wants to know about I-bonds. And then Gino wants to defend internet financial advice. Uh, and uh, we're going to take a short break when we return. This is Josh Jelinski, the financial quarterback. Call us at 888-988-JOSH for the 45-minute ultimate income for life blueprint. Many of you have called us during your summer break to get a second opinion on your wealth. Call us now, 888-988-JOSH. 888-988-5674. We'll be back after these messages. The preceding program was sponsored by the Jelinski Advisory Group. Any awards, rankings, or recognition by unaffiliated third parties or publications, including Five Star Wealth Manager, Advisory of the Year finalist by Senior Market Advisor, and Top of the Million Dollar Roundtable, are in no way indicative of the advisor's future performance or any individual client's investment success. No award, ranking, or recognition should be construed as a current or past endorsement of Josh Jelinski or Wealth Quarterback, LLC. Information regarding specific awards, rankings, or recognitions is available on the Wealth Quarterback website at www.jelinski.org. All investment strategies have the potential for profit or loss. Investment strategies such as asset allocation, diversification, or rebalancing do not assure or guarantee better performance and cannot eliminate the risk of investment losses. There are no guarantees that a portfolio employing these or any other strategy will outperform a portfolio that does not engage in such strategies. This broadcast should not be construed by any any client or prospective client as a solicitation to affect or attempt to affect transactions and securities or the rendering of personalized investment advice. Due to various factors, including changing market conditions, the information discussed in this broadcast may no longer be reflective of current positions or recommendations. While information presented is believed to be factual and up-to-date, Josh Jelinski and Wealth Quarterback do not guarantee its accuracy, and it should not be regarded as a complete analysis of the subjects discussed. The tax and estate planning information discussed is general in nature. It's provided for informational purposes only and should not be construed as legal or tax advice. Listeners should consult an attorney or tax professional regarding their specific legal or tax situation. Advisory services offered through Wealth Quarterback, LLC.